guys welcome to a very exciting day i'm currently eating my lunch in the car so i have not been able to uh, record anything at all this morning i am at the coroner's court for the day a very very exciting day so i'm at the coroner's court for the day and the reason i wasn't able to record this morning is because i couldn't find the court um so i was running a little bit behind but also when i got up this morning i was looking for something to wear should have done it last night i know i was convinced i had something i did not and the only pants that i was able to wear that would have been appropriate <clears throat> no longer fit me i then also had the problem of i couldn't find any shoes to wear all the shoes that i have are sliders and trainers again was convinced i had shoes that i could have worn but i did not so also on top of not being able to find the court properly i had to stop off and buy some shoes and some pants and i went into sainsbury's they had nothing that I wanted to wear, like nothing for me. So I've ended up spending £35 on a pair of pants. In fact, to be fair, the pants aren't that bad, but the shoes are horrific. They're so ugly. I will never wear them again. But, sorry, I'm so hungry. I've only got 20 minutes left before I have to go back in. Okay, because I got here literally bang on time. So it's been a very, 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 very interesting inquest. A very sad one, which I'm not going to be able to give all the details for, for obvious reasons. But I will talk you through it once I have finished. I obviously cannot film in the court. I guess I can tell you a little bit. It's regarding a person, I won't say man or woman. Um, I don't want to give details. So, about a person who actually passed away in 2017. So it's a six year long inquest which is very, very unusual. It all boils down to pressure areas. And if you wasn't overly worried about pressure areas before, honestly, this inquest has given me the fright of my life about just how quickly it can deteriorate. And this person, we haven't got the results yet, so I don't know, but it is the inquest is regarding to see if these bed sores slash pressure ulcers are actually the result of this patient's death in a hospital setting and that terrifies me i can't even tell you so yeah i can't really say much more and i won't say much more until i come out but uh, it's a very nice i don't even know if it'll pick up on my camera but it's a very sweet little area that i'm in there is myself there's the judge the coroner like an assistant in there two assistants in the room um two family members two witnesses two solicitors three four solicitors lots of witnesses on team which is an unusual thing to see so yeah, it's a very bizarre bizarre thing but extremely interesting listening to everything so i'm gonna finish my lunch and then i will talk to you guys when i come back out but i will talk to you more to all about how to book it or whatever it is i will talk to you guys more about how to go to the coroner's court yourself and things like that so i'll talk to you guys when i come out but for now i'm going to stuff my face in my lunch and get back in so we are done i'll talk to you guys in the car the weather's really nice very interesting yeah i'll talk to you guys in the car i am out i am actually on b&m car park <laughs> because not really anywhere for me to film around the coroner's court i don't think it's appropriate for me to be filming around the coroner's court so i do apologize that pretty much the well pretty much the entire of the contents of this video is filmed in my car but going to the coroner's court there's not really anywhere else that i can do this kind of filming so i will quickly tell you so that i'm not boring you sat in the car all day i'll tell you the runnings of the day i'll try and tell you a bit about the trial in so much that ooh, ooh, big gray cloud sorry i'm so easily distracted by it they were not there a minute ago it was like this all blue so sorry anyway i am um, yeah, I will quickly tell you a little bit about that. I'll try and tell you about the trial and then I'll tell you about how to do it yourself, how to book on, how to get there, how to do it, all the fun stuff. So, in fact, I'll tell you about how I got onto it in the first place. I'll tell you that first. That would make more sense, Faye. Come on, wake up. So, 
I never knew that anybody could go to a coroner's court, number one. Anybody can go, it's open to the public. Didn't know that. I don't know if normal court is, maybe it is as well, I'm not too sure, maybe you could inform me if you know. I was told by one of the carers at the hospice that I'm working at about it, she said she went during her HCA training there, told me that they are more than happy for me to go and attend, so I did ask the staff and they said yeah that's absolutely fine in fact they encouraged me to go i went on to my local areas um coroner's inquest list of all the inquests that are coming up and when and i just picked one that i wanted to go to it doesn't tell you what the inquest is doesn't tell you what the inquest is about it doesn't tell you who it's gonna um, involve it just tells you who the person is who's died the date and time that's it that's the only information you get so you literally could be going to a I don't know if I'm allowed to say this word on here, but uh, you could go to someone who, I'll rephrase it, someone who has taken their own life, you could go to someone who has done that. Accidents, it can be um, negligence, medical negligence, things like that. So someone who has died will go to be seen and looked at, not them physically, but the caseload, will be sent to a coroner. Now a coroner, from my understanding, is like going to a criminal court, they would be the judge. Now, instead of the judge in a criminal court finding a verdict, you are in there with the coroner, who is the judge, um, finding a conclusion, not a verdict. Because something else that I learned about coroner's court today, which I did not know, is that it's not there to blame anybody. They're not trying to find someone to blame like they would in a criminal court. So they're not trying to find out who did it. They're not trying to find out anything like that. They're just trying to find out the cause of death. I assume that if family members or whatever want to take it further once they receive the conclusion of the coroner's report i assume you could then take it to a court of criminal a criminal court if that was suitable um but don't quote me on it i don't know that for a fact so that's kind of a little basis about what the coroner's court is so how to go about it is like i say i rang up my private my private my local coroner's office and just said hi i'm a third year student nurse I'm on placement at the moment, they've said I can come out to see you, but I thought I'd ring first. Now, I know it's open to anybody, and technically I think you can just turn up, but you could be turned away. So it's always best to just ring in advance. So I did ring, I just said I'm, I'm interested in coming, and they said that's fine, just let us know when you get here. So that's what I did. So when I got there today, there was the coroner, there was the family members i think i mentioned who was there before actually so i won't go into that again it was all those people that i mentioned before they were all in the courtroom it was a very small courtroom it wasn't like anything that you see on the tv some people just pulled up in the car behind me and they are looking as you can see but they think i'm crazy i don't care so it wasn't a very massive court but there was also i think i mentioned about the being caught i said i don't know if they're called not court marshals i don't know what they're called court assistants or something one of them who i was speaking to who i spoke to when i arrived she is actually uh, an ex-nurse it turns out which is really really weird that she's actually nursed her entire career at the hospice that i'm from not from but at the moment and i just thought that was so bizarre even she said she was like oh my god that's a really small world so she was really nice. She said she retired from that kind of nursing and now is just like a support network in the coroner's court for family. So anybody that's going for anything difficult, she's there as like a, a shoulder to cry on, I guess. So, you know, a bit of, a bit of moral support and things like that, which I think is a lovely job. So once the uh, proceedings began, this inquest had been going on since 2017, which I believe I told you before, which is really unheard of but there was a backlog from covid and everything it was it's really really sad so without going too much into detail i did mention before that it was to do with pressure sores and there was a lot of blame on a hospital but there was also blame on a care home and the inquest was trying to find out where they got the pressure shorts pressure sores from um and the reason that they got as bad as they did and why they went septic um, and if that was the cause of death if, if it was the ulcers that had gone septic or if there was an infection somewhere else because this person who had died had comorbidities and it was a very complex case when they went into the actual medical history and everything I won't tell you the outcome i don't know if i'm allowed to i don't want to get into trouble but i will say something that everyone's nursing degree lecturers and tutors and mentors and assessors all say well they do to us anyway if it wasn't documented it didn't happen and i cannot stress to you guys enough that 
I have always been aware of documentation, as I'm sure anybody is, and we get it hammered into us, and we're like, oh, we know, we know to document, we know to document. But the severity of not documenting has been really highlighted to me in this coroner's court today. I cannot believe, I'm just having a drink, sorry. I cannot believe the massively huge negative effect that this has had on so many people, and it's just not worth it. The amount of witnesses, I think there was like 13 altogether. It was very, very big case. And very, very complex. And one of the main outcomes that they had found as a lesson learned was documentation, because there was a lot of gray areas where evidence was really needed and things hadn't been documented. Now, did those things that hadn't been documented, had they happened? Possibly. But if they've not been documented, it will be taken in the court of law that they never happened and that can really impact the outcome massively. So it was uh, very, very eye-opening. Not that I wasn't overly cautious of documentation stuff anyway, but I am even more so now. And the mad thing is, as I said before, I could have turned up to any kind of case. It could have been all the things I mentioned before, but my case that I attended to was actually a medical case, which even the nurse who was on, who was in the courtroom, like the assistant, even she said, like the chances of you coming in and it being a medical case are really, really good, especially something really specifically medical, specifically nursing. There were nurses that were brought up as witnesses, ward managers, sisters, care home staff. Oh, it was just, every nurse's worst nightmare so all i will say to you guys and what i'm going to take from this is please please whatever you do no matter how minor you think it is document it if someone comes in and they've got a scratch on the back of their hand from the cat or like me the dog document it on the body maps you cannot afford trust me from this case you cannot afford to not document absolutely anything that you find with your patient and another key part was not just the physical stuff to document, but the verbal things that are discussed between patient and, and staff, because there was a vital piece of evidence that came in right at the end that actually quite massively swayed the outcome, um, which was a nurse had documented, tissue viability nurse had documented a conversation that she'd had with this patient in question, um, and that was huge. So please guys, document, document, document. This was the most interesting thing I've ever done. The nurse who was in the courtroom is like the nurses that the courtroom assistant, she said she wishes more student nurses would come and she thinks that all student nurses should come to a coroner's court and I 100, 110% agree with that. I'm actually gonna go to another one. I'm not gonna book another day of placement. I'm not gonna be that cheeky because I've done that now for placement. But um, when I get a day off or whatever, if I get time, I am 110% gonna do my very best to try and go to another coroner's court because it was, a huge eye opener, a huge learning curve, and yeah, it was really, really interesting a lot. So, I'm really sorry that this video has been a bit rubbish in the sense of how it's been filmed because I've just been trapped in a car most of the time, but there's not really anywhere else for me to film, and ah, you know, all the fun things. Um, but I am gonna go and head into BM now, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was very interesting to some people. If there's anything that I've missed or you want to ask, just leave it in the comment section below and I'll do my very best to answer as much as I can. Obviously, maintaining confidentiality and things like that. But if there's things that you want to know about Coroner's Court that I have a, that you don't think I've covered, um, please do let me know and I will do my very best to answer it. But for now, I'm gonna head inside, get my shopping, get home. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.